Okay, I, I came um, to support the Occupy Movement for One and to support um, what's attempting to be done on behalf of prisoners, which also affects not just prisoners, but also friends and relatives of prisoners and the community at large as well. And um, I want to, um, you know, I want to help inspire this, this movement any way I can. And I, I'd like to have us uh, coordinate our efforts toward an overall plan so that we can really make some strategic gains and advances in this struggle. What do you think are some things that, that like everyday people should know about prisons that maybe they don't know? Well, one thing they should know is that prisons are extremely big business. In this state, our prisoners produce about $125 million worth of license plates per year. They produce $11 million in clothing, furniture, and things like that. Um, they also generate about uh, $11.25 million a year for companies like Red Motel Link and Evercom. So prisons produce a lot of money, and they make slave wages, 50 cents to a dollar an hour is the highest wage, but prisoners also uh, make 50 cents to two dollars a day, which is the wage that most prisoners make. And, and uh, the government is increasingly shifting the cost of prisons to families of prisoners. For example, uh, we just was involved in a fight with a sheriff in Bristol County was illegally charging people rent to be in jail. He, uh, he earned a million dollars in two years doing that, and we were a part of an effort that helped find 1,100 families to be reimbursed. Now, the state has held that money up um, because they want to check to see if, if people owe any money. But we've also found uh, a regulation that's going to cut down substantially any of the monies that members of this plaintiff's class owe so that they'll, they'll at least be able to get some money uh, through the settlement of the, of the lawsuit. So those are some of the things that people uh, don't know. For, and also, uh, you see community service. Uh, a lot of jobs that uh, people do on that used to be civil service jobs, used to pay a living wage. Now they sentence people to do that work for nothing, and they've moved out the workers that used to do that work, which bust, helps uh, bust the unions up uh, and uh, takes money out of the about $40 million a year in uh, income that's no longer available for families to spend with uh, businesses, with landlords, things like that. So these, these are some of the things that the uh, public doesn't know. And one final thing I'll say is that the legal status of a prisoner, in the, in the, of a convict in the United States of America is a slave. And Crawford versus Indiana State Department of Corrections, Seventh Circuit case, 1997, prisoner sued for uh, a living wage under the Fair Labor Standards Act. The court said, we know from the 13th Amendment, the government can subject people to involuntary servitude as punishment for crime. That's just a polite word for slavery, and a slave has no right to a living wage or any wage at all. So this is the United States in 1997. So that's the legal status of a prisoner. So this is prison slavery. And the, the term, the terminology, and some of the chances today that organizers were doing in terms of prison slavery are not exaggerated. It's a uh, it's legal fact. Case law supports it. The Constitution makes it clear. And uh, legal scholars have written a lot on, on the subject that makes it clear that that's the actual status of prisons. So what about the ability of uh, prisoners to communicate through the telephone? It's quite difficult, isn't it? Yes. And it's very expensive. Can you tell us? Well, it is. Uh, the two companies that dominate the market, Global Tel Link and Evercom, um, they earned uh, $45 million in uh, four years from the families and friends of prisoners paying for prepaid and collect calls. Um, the state gets 35 50 cents on every dollar that we spend for those calls. So the state ends up in the state's pockets as commissions. This is in violation of... 02-39, which says that um, commissions cannot be counted as costs because they're profit. The state allowed those companies to count those commissions as costs and to increase the rates to allow those companies to recoup the money that uh, that they paid to the state as kickbacks. So we, we're saying that this is a conflict of interest, that the Department of Telecommunications and Cable 
cannot sit because they're an interested party. Because they're a state agency, the state gets money, they get commissions out of this. So how then can you sit as a rate-setting tribunal when you get a kickback based on how, how high you set the rates? And did you say you had an action planned about this issue? Well, right. There is a, this action is a, the telephone the specific is a public hearing tactic that we'll be doing. Um, we help force the... Uh, state agency to finally docket a petition that was filed by Prison Legal Services. They sat on it for two years, so now they finally docketed it because we had people mailing in postcards all across the state. Now we have to force them to set a hearing date, and we are also going to uh, pack the house for that hearing. Uh, we are putting out a call for people to show up for that. Where is that? It's going to probably be at uh, 1000 Washington Street is where the Department of, uh, in the South End, where the in Department Boston. of, right, in Boston, where they have their offices at. So we're organizing for that now. We're building up um, toward that at, at this time. And you don't know the date yet? They haven't given it. We have, we're going to have to make them, literally make them give us a date. How can people get more information about it if they're watching this? Okay, they can uh, call us at 617-267-1024. Our office is at 418 Mass Ave in the South End. So they can either call us, they can come by our, our office and, and learn more about this, how, to, how they can get involved. We're also going to be having a series of community meetings on the same, on the same issue. And this thing about the uh, illegal rent, the state has set on the settlement checks that were supposed to go back to these prisoners and their families for getting legally charged rent. They've had the uh, finished list from the court since August 22nd. They have yet to cut those checks, and people uh, really need that money. And uh, one last thing on that subject, um, there, there were something like 15 unsolved uh, uh, murders in Bristol County where this came out of, and nine of the people who were victims of those unsolved murders were people who were due to be reimbursed money for being illegally charged rent. So that sort of goes against the sheriff's argument that his illegal rent plan was going to help um, with rehabilitation and cut, and, and cut the city. So what does it cost a, uh, a prisoner to make a phone call now or his family to make the phone call to him? Um, I don't know exactly what, what the rates are, but they're extremely high. They're about four times what the normal rates are. There are all sorts of surcharges that are attached. Uh, people routinely get cut off, and there's a, a reconnection fee. People get uh, get cut off, um, you know, uh, several times, and they have to pay a reconnection fee. And then the surcharges, and the uh, if, if the commissions weren't involved in it, the rates would be radically reduced. So the because the, the state receives commissions from the phone companies, the phone companies keep those keep those rates high, and that that jacks the cost. Of and then of course these people have lost a breadwinner in their family, and they don't have a lot of money. Right, exactly. And and the real the reality of it, they say that these policies make the bad guys pay, but it's the families who are paying. And 94% of people in the prison system come from the lowest income communities. 56% um, are black and Hispanic, and they make up 16% of the population at large. And 85% of the crimes that people are convicted for are economic property seeking crimes. So low income minorities um, who were poor and who were convicted of money seeking crimes form the whole basis of the prison system in Massachusetts. So can you tell us your name and the name of your organization? Okay, my name is Harold Adams. I, I'm the operations manager for the Committee of Friends and Relatives of, of Prisoners. And we're a private, uh, all-voluntary membership association, and we have a nine-point benefit program that includes free transportation, information and referral, pen pal, that, that's uh, available to our members free of charge. Thank you. Thank you very much for speaking with us.